Today I've come along to the headquarters of King of the Kipax. King of the Kipax, of course, a long-running fanzine, started in 1988. This is the first edition. 50p it was back in those days. There have been another 298 copies, apart from that first one, so far. There will be a 300th, but that will be the last one. So I've come along, as I say, to King of the Kipax HQ to meet the editor and um, the editor's other half, the better half really, uh, Dave and Sue Wallace, to just talk about the whole fanzine, how it came about, you know, what what made it really exist in the first place, what has it achieved, how does Dave feel about doing it all these years and now coming to an end and why did it even start in the first place. So you're going to meet Dave, you're going to meet Sue, but what a fantastic HQ. It's great, isn't it? Wish I had an HQ like this. <laughs> you make that look very easy. Um, that's about it, I think. That's you. That's me. <gasps> You're flattering me. <laughs> <laughs> Just a smiley face, basically. Yeah, this is Bramall Lane, and it's uh, obviously Sheffield United versus City. And when we lived in Sheffield, I was just... Uh, I could walk to Bramall Lane uh, and watch the Blues. So this came up and I, uh, I got it off... Uh, <clears throat> not eBay, but bought it off... Uh, a company in Sheffield because it's a bit nostalgic really um, and obviously I went to this game Rodney Marsh played and Tony Curry, Trevor Hockey, Alan Woodward, Mike Sumner and um, yeah I'm, it's just waiting to be framed. You've got quite a lot of stuff in here haven't you I mean that oh, right back I need... to the uh, cup final, the Burt Trautman final, yeah. this Dan shirt yeah but I've Emily gave us that. Yeah? Yeah. That's one of your contributors, Emily Brobin. Yeah. <clears throat> and, you, and you've obviously got, um, you know, magazines, newspaper clippings. I mean, it does yeah. look like a proper working office, this, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I've got programmes here. You know, old programmes. I've got everyone from the war to present day. And it's worth saying you've written a couple of books as well. In fact, I can I have, see your yeah. own books yeah. here on yeah. the shelf. Yeah. That's your section, is it? Centu <laughs> Just those two, yeah. Century City and Us and Them. I could do, do with updating Us and Them now because came out in 2011. So uh, I have been online uh, updating everything. So I might, I might, if I can afford it, I might bring the... Uh, the next issue out of that one. Tell me how King of the Kipax came about. What, why, what made you want to be editor and, and take on this lifelong passion of yours? <laughs> well, I'd already served my time here, and I'd had letters printed in the uh, in the papers. I'd had um, I'd won competitions, Danny Stewart and Keith McRae poem competitions, and various other things. And I was a member of the FSA, Football Supporters Association. Um, so I was meeting with fellow fellow supporters from different clubs that were passionate about the things that I was passionate about. And uh, that didn't really come through from the mainstream. So fanzine started in the mid-80s mid, mid -80s and um, Blueprint were the first city fanzine. We were moving house in 87, um, so I gave some articles to Blueprint. Eventually, round about eight, September 88, we started. Uh, we had a, a, an editorial difference with Blueprint, so we started to do uh, King of the Capax and just took it from there, really. Um, it was a bad time for football, hooliganism, ID cards, Heisel, lots of problems, and um, it was just a difficult time, and we were hoping to... You never saw anything about the humour of football fans. Um, we wanted to give fans a voice. Um, 
and so tell it, it as it is. Was it slightly against the sterility of official programmes? And yeah, things it was. Like that? It was bland, glo bland gro gloss at the time, um, and uh, you know we, the fanzines came out and people told it as it as it was. Uh, sometimes went a bit too far, really, but uh, you know better to go too far and bring it back a little bit. And it was, uh, you know, when I when I used to go to away games as well. And when I got back on the kickbacks, they all used to say, well, what, you know, what happened? So everybody wanted to know about how many City fans were there. What were the chants? What were the police like? What was the stewards like? What were the away fans like? You know, and it was that, uh, it was that sort of thing that we started to bring out with the match reports, with different match reports. They weren't just on who kicked the ball to who. They were all about everything that surrounds the game going to the pub even and things like that and the humour that uh, everybody had with the chance at uh, football grounds. So you've become a millionaire from this haven't you? Um, <laughs> not really no, no. We've uh, we've managed to keep afloat so far but it's been difficult these last, uh, last few issues really. And the club, have they reacted to it? I mean, I think if I remember rightly there were times when it was difficult to sell it and then they allowed you to do it so they, they seem to have embraced you and King of the Kipax in recent years don't they? Yeah, yeah. I mean we, we we went through difficult times where we were, we were stopped from selling we were threatened to be sued at one point and um, in recent years even even though we've had an official letter from the club we still get stopped by stewards who ring up and say is this, is this allowed to be sold here but generally the club the club are okay with us now and um, I mean we're not as critical as the club as we used to be in the Swales area and the, all you know the Franny in the Franny out and all that sort of stuff. The main thrust of the fanzine now is the uh, the media and other clubs that used to be friendly with us like Liverpool and their uh, their obsession with uh, having a go at us so it's a it's a different magazine now I think um, I think we've improved and learnt things over the years. And uh, funnily enough, I think, I think issue 299 was one of the best we've ever done. Obviously with the, the contrib contributors, subscribers, with the contributors have got better as the years have gone on. We're all getting a bit older, a bit more mature perhaps. And um, we're just getting tremendous stuff. What's the proudest thing would you say about having been involved in this? Because you're the editor ultimately. Um, you are started off writing but it's largely other people that perhaps have contributed. And I know some of them, like Richard yeah. Burgess, went on to work for the uh, Manchester Evening News. What makes you pr the most proud of what you've done? Um, I think it's basically giving, giving fans a voice uh, that we've never really had before and um, bringing out the humour of City fans and um, just moving on from there. We've had a lot of front covers that we've been proud of. I think I think the most recent one was the VAR, VAR one, where you know we had the lad saying to his dad, "Why why do we need VAR?" And the dad says, "Well, because uh, the referees and the, the other officials weren't up to the job." So he says, "Well, what's the improvement?" And I said, "Well, nothing really, because we've got the same people involved in VAR that weren't good enough in the first place, which was the reason they brought in VAR, and it's been a disaster." And it's annoyed football fans. Just the last weekend, they spend five, six, seven minutes making a decision that's pretty obvious to everybody watching the game. And uh, it, it's upset a lot of people. A lot of people would rather go back to how it was because we still make massive mistakes. But we've been pleased to be able to give, uh, give a voice to City fans particularly over the years. And um, in the dark days... You know, the fanzines, not just KK, but the other fanzines that came about. The supporters clubs were great and we were able to promote them. And of course, all, all the genuine uh, city supporters that were in the media, people like Oasis, um, Johnny Marr, Billy Duffy, people like that. And all the celebrity blues that we've sometimes been able to interview and m make it, make it uh, apparent to ordinary City fans, young lads who'd never seen us win a thing, that we had cool guys that actually supported City. Ricky Hatton, for example, is another one. So I think we've been, we've been proud to be able to do that over the years. I mean, what we haven't done 
we've not been able to make any impact on you know number of shirts that are being brought in and kickoff times and sky tv and everything so there's things that we've been disappointed that we've not been able to make any improvements on but you know we've done what we've done and uh, we've got to pr be proud of 35 years and 300 issues ian really tell me how much you time and effort you put into this then i mean you had a normal job i mean i was joking about you being a millionaire before yeah, but yeah. you work you do this as as a hobby project really don't yeah, you yeah um so just tell me about how much commitment and how much of your time and your lovely wife sue's time you put into this because you do it's it's you know your house is is, is your office really it's your hq isn't it yeah it is yeah yeah well now basically when we get um we usually get uh, articles in on the mon on the Monday, um, and it takes a full week to get them formatted. Um, we have to put headings in. We have to do cartoons, photographs, highlights, and it takes us a full week to to get them all ready for the uh, for the printer. We have a layout guy now because we've moved into complete color editions. We have a layout guy who does it all, and he gets stuff off the internet that we've and puts things in that we, we would never have done in the old days. So it's it's a full week doing that. We get it to the printers in, in that time. I've got to do compliment slips, stick stamps on letters, labels on envelopes. And um, by the time it usually comes back in, on the Thursday and I try and get everything out by the Friday, um, get all the uh, fanzines put into the uh, envelopes off to the post office or post boxes. We have to drive around Lee to different, not all the post boxes will take an A4 <laughs> letter. So we have to drive around and, and do it. I mean, at one point I used to, I used to go down to Culture, to the post box in Culture. And that was the, that was the car park where the uh, police uh, shot a guy one time. Luckily I wasn't there at the time. You know, that was about five years ago, I think. So, you know, that was a lucky escape really. Uh, but I mean, that's since I've been retired, so it's a solid fortnight. It's waking up at five o'clock in the morning thinking, oh, did I put this score in? Did I put this attendance in? Who was the referee for a game? And then maybe going back to bed for a couple of hours and then staying up. I've always been a night bird, so I've always been able to, uh, you know, to carry on till one o'clock in the morning. But when I was working, uh, I don't know how I did it, to be honest. Um, obviously, with Sue backing me up, that was brilliant. But... You know, I used to go to work at five o'clock in the morning. You know, it was a responsible job, project manager at the airport, you know, and I'd be, I'd get, I'd, I'd go to bed at five o'clock, get up at eight o'clock, have a meeting with the Germans or whoever was doing the latest project on baggage handling at the airport. And looking back, it was definitely a young man's uh, occupation at that time. I think the guys, who, I think David Mooney, who does the, you know, one of the podcasts now, he says something similar that, He's always thinking about doing the podcast. If he's not actually doing it, he's thinking about what's going on, you know, and it's an experience that you've, you've probably had. But age catches up on us all, and now it's becoming a, a bigger effort, um, even though we're getting fantastic uh, contributions. Um, it it's now appears to be the, the time to call it a day. I've got a big birthday coming up, and really it's ridiculous to be doing this sort of thing at my age. I've always drawn and I, I did actually go to art college um, where I learned very little. Um, well, you obviously learned something. <laughs> <laughs> um, and then started a family more or less straight after leaving art college and uh, didn't pick up a pen or a pencil for years. And then when we started the fanzine, we didn't know how to put photographs in. So we had little gaps where I would do a little doodle to go in the gap and then like Topsy it grew and um, bit by bit I got uh, more used to doing it and um, that's really um, the story. I as well think. as doing people, I mean, I know you've even drawn me in the in the mm -hmm. in the, in the backs. People like Sean, who's a regular contributor, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Jed, and people like that. You also do the stadiums, don't you? No, uh, I don't. No, do you the don't stadiums. do the stadiums. Da that's Dave's department because that's so he more, draws them. He's more a draftsman. He was a, a draftsman 
at the start of his career. So he, I can't draw a straight line to save my life. Even with a ruler, it ends up wobbling, so. People who are nice looking at, strangely, are hard to draw, except um, Harland was a joy. Um, but people who don't have a, a prominent persona written in their face, um, so who's the easiest one then? Have you got an easy one? Uh, well, people like Sam Allardyce. Um, I did him chewing a wasp because it said in the text he looks like he's chewing a wasp. Um, and uh, um, Alan Ball and um, Francis Lee was quite easy to draw as well. Um, Swales? And Swales, um, yeah. I think you well, should do a self-portrait and one of Dave in the last issue. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. The other thing, of course, that you haven't mentioned, but I've witnessed it down the years, is you and Sue and other people stood outside grounds in pouring rain, getting there two or three hours before. I know you probably missed bits of matches as well, getting in late, coming out early. Yeah. So it's not yeah. just putting the magazine together, it's actually selling it, as you mentioned, distributing it. Yeah. There's a lot more to it than people think really, isn't yeah, there? Yeah, yeah, really is. Um, I mean, there's no point in putting a fantastic magazine together if you can't sell it. So yeah, we've, we've stood out there in rain, sleet, snow, sunshine sometimes, which has been brilliant. You know, we've had all the, all the times when we've met, uh, you know, met some great people, some great supporters, got great Mike, feedback. Mike, any great ones that stand out in your mind? And he's great, what? Are the people who you've met who oh, are just ordinary yeah, fans yeah. or famous people who yeah, come bought a magazine? We've, we've met famous people, yeah. We've met um, Sir Howard Davis, we've met him off, often, and John Stapleton, people like that. We've met Oasis at uh, QPR, I think, you know, when they, they you just live around the corner, you know, and I said to Liam, I said, your music. You used to get a lot of criticism, Oasis, from older people in the MEN on that, you know, but... You know, I said to Liam, I said, your music stands up to anything from the 60s, mate. And he said, cheers. So I was quite pleased about that. But yeah, we've met many people. And of course, we used to go to all the away games, um, which was brilliant. Staying over sometimes when we could and uh, making a weekend of it, which a lot of City fans do now. As we as we get older, we're able to do... More fans are able to do that anymore. And Sean, Sean Riley, who... Went to every home and away game for year after year after year for about 30 years, I think. He had the record. Um, he does all the away reports. And the away reports are more than just, you know, who kicked the ball to who. You know, it was what went, what went on, how he got there, train, bus, plane, whatever. And, uh, you know, I find that of interest, really, more than, uh, more than the actual game sometimes. I mean, obviously, for the long periods where we were absolute rubbish, the... The actual away day was was better than the uh, the actual game, you know. Thinking of Lincoln and York and places like that, you know. A lot, I know a lot of City fans say, "Oh, it was great in the third division in that," but I don't believe that. I hated it in the third division, even though we were, <laughs> we were going to new new grounds and that. And as well as you mentioned, Sean Riley, we mentioned Richard Burgess. You've got Jed <coughs> Sounds off. You've had Emily Brobin, who's yeah, one of my he's done well, uh, yeah. uh, people who's contributed to my my podcast. Is soaring now in her in her career. That there, there are so many contributors that I guess after all this time now that you look back on, and you think, well, because they all do it for free, don't they? Yeah, and they so, do it for the love of the club. Yeah, and, yeah. and so every one of them really deserves a mention. We can't mention them all, but they've all been part no. of the story, yeah. haven't they? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, Stephen Tom Parish who sell it you know been big friends ever since uh, we started and still doing well for us um yeah of course richard burgess is now a big uh, cheese at the bbc so he moved on from the fanzine i think he went to university i think he went to cardiff and and got into the media in cardiff by taking taking a fanzine where he had one article in which annoyed his sister louise who had loads of articles in and she's doing well now flits between Australia and this country. You know, we've had we've met some fabulous people and had, you know, made great friendships. And you, as well as doing this, have done things, I know you were the, the, the blue, Santa blue 
at the uh, Junior Blues every yeah, year. Yeah. Um, you know, you, you, you've absolutely lived and breathed Manchester City. Yeah, um, yeah. I have got one question to finish this whole interview, but just on the current city and the way that the club has changed. I mean, you've seen everything from the 68 team and before that when Mike Doyle was coming in yeah. and Glyn Pardo and Alan Oakes and all the rest of it and you've seen it all the way through to what we're witnessing now. How do you feel personally about the way the club's changed, is changing and and how has that been reflected in King and the Kipax? Yeah, well, yeah, I started supporting City in 1955 so... Uh, I mean, my joke is I then stopped till 2008, but everybody knows I still went during that time. Um, well, it, it, the club's evolved. It's a miles different club now than what it was. I, I accept that things have changed. We're getting a different, slightly different fan base. Um, but I quite enjoy watching the, um, you know, the, 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 the foreign lads come, come in and take photographs of themselves with half and half scarves. It, it doesn't really bother me. I find it quite endearing. You know, in, in our section, uh, we probably get half a dozen like that, which is fine. And, and their enthusiasm is infectious, really. Um, but I've got people, I've got a guy who sits behind me that um, I was at work with about 30 years ago at a, a certain place when he was 16. He was a blue and his dad was a red. And uh, we became fr great friends. And uh, he sits behind me now and that's uh, that's good with his family. Um, all my kids are obviously blues. They wouldn't be, you know, they wouldn't be part of the Wallace family. There's the only one that's let us down, which is our granddaughter Heather. She's uh, she's partnered with a red, but he's, uh, you know, we can give him a lot of stick, and he takes it in good part. Even at Wembley, they went to Wembley together, and he he had to leave before the end and go and sit on a farm somewhere with his head in his hands. So, you know, we had to console him about that. So you, you've you've had a fantastic time doing all this. I can tell that. Yeah. And obviously we, I'm not quite as old as you, but we've seen the journey from the Bell Lee Summerby era through the doldrums of the third tier of English yeah. football. Yeah. And you, as King of the Kipax, were still there doing everything, reporting it, being the fan's friend, the voice of the fans, just as I yeah. like to try to be in what I'm doing these yeah. days. And here we are with the greatest team probably that has ever been. Won the treble, um, might do it again, who knows. Yeah. Um, won all four domestic trophies. There's nothing we haven't seen. And you've chronicled it all. You must feel <laughs> extremely proud of what you have, at the part that you have been of City fandom. Well, yeah, I think it's a minor talent. I mean, we've, we've, we've relied on fantastic contributions from, from people. Uh, and we've got to give credit to the other fanzines as well. We've, everybody's kept it going. And you know some of the some of the people who wrote for the other fanzines have come to us, and uh, you know there was a lot of rivalry early on with the fanzines, and it was an awful period where we were arguing amongst ourselves. I mean, it was dreadful, but uh, we all stuck together and we're all friends now, and I'm pleased about that. And um, yeah, we've uh, I think we've done every we've covered every every game home and away for the last thirty five years in a in a fans format, which is different from. The mainstream but I mean the mainstream has picked up from fanzines if you read the evening news now you'll see that the the city and United reporters actually comment on fans chants and what goes on with the fans and the banter and everything so I think we've uh, we've created some of that and we're very we're very proud of that but you know it's it's now unfortunate I mean it's, I still love doing it but as you get older um, it, 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 it makes makes a heavy toll really and well uh, that was going to be my last question i mean you you yeah. have made the decision that the next mm -mm. edition number 300 is yeah. going to be the last one so when does that come out and how do we get it but yeah. just as importantly how did it feel to you i know you've said age is catching up and all sorts of things so you've yeah. already given us a little bit of the answer but how hard was it to call it a day and and admit sort of well that's it yeah, it it was quite hard. We, we we just about got to the end of last season being financially viable. So I needed to see what the subscriptions were like this season. And they have fallen away for various reasons. Postage has now gone up by another 40p. It costs £2.40 to send the fanzine out. Uh, and it's becoming uh, untenable, really. So that's that's been part of the reason. 
and obviously reaching this milestone has been another one. Frane dying, which might sound a bit hypocritical for, for me because I was quite critical of his time, but I was there when he made his debut at 16, both the same age, and it is a sobering thought, you know, that he's passed as well, and um, that's that's a bit of a worry. But as far as the football goes, it's, it's fantastic football, um, and it's just a pleasure to watch. Um, unfortunately, you, you just want to win every game. I did have I did have a mate early on. We won the league in '68, the cup in '69, and he said, "Right, that's me. I've done now. I've seen us win the league and the cup." I don't feel like that. I know we're going out on a high, but I don't feel like right. I've seen us win the treble. That's it. I want to see us win the treble every year and beat United every derby game. You know, so it's not a case of that. It's just a good time to to call it a day after the... I remember the 200 edition, Ian, and um, it came out at Fulham. Um, and I think we spoke, I think we parked in the same place in some vicar's uh, backyard or somewhere. And, uh, you know, I, at that time, I think you said, you know, here's the 300. And I could not see us reaching 300 because I'd be this age that I am now. But I'm just so pleased that we've done it. And it's all down to the subscribers and the contributors and um, we just say thanks to everybody and thank the tributes we're getting are fantastic and just thanks everybody um it's going to be quite tearful when we do do the uh the final edition so you know that i mean i find it tearful when i do the last one of the season so what what's it going to be like when i do the uh the final edition that's going to be uh tricky and how we cope with the aftermath of that i'm not quite sure i know some of the guys some of the subscribers are thinking of doing something online maybe so you know it, it would be a shame that we've got all these great subscribers and all these people who still want to read a fanzine that we, we can't get something else going online so you know maybe it's not quite the bitter end but it's certainly the end of the printed fanzine so how do people get hold of this copy the 300th it's going to be a, a collector's <coughs> item surely uh could be yeah yeah and uh you know we hope to do everybody proud when we bring it out it's coming out for hopefully the liverpool game the home game with liverpool um you can buy by check by paypal or bax and if you e if you email us on k-o-t-k dot fanzine at gmail dot com um we, we can give you details i miss it um but i i can't wait to have a, a choice of where and when we go on holiday and um you know and seeing the family more and going to see my daughter in south wales more often and not having to fit everything around football that's what i look forward to i still what? we'll still go to the to city but we we won't have to fit family life around the football um, well on behalf of all the people who've enjoyed your little doodles um, thank you for what you've done and thanks for your part in King and the Kid Backs. Yes, I can, I can say it's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure mostly because of the lovely people that we've met along the way like yourself. On behalf of everybody who has bought a copy, uh, many copies perhaps down the years, and has loved what King and the Kid Backs represents, which is the fans and the city family, the biggest thank you I can possibly, the most sincere thank you I can give you to you, to Sue, and to everybody, all those people we've mentioned and those who haven't been mentioned for doing what you've done because without that, City wouldn't be the club that it is, would it? I don't think so. Well, very nice of you to say that, but, you know, we've, like I say, it's been a minor talent for me and, um, yeah, I appreciate everything that you've just said.